W O V U L P Cleveland. Stand up. And now, our voices today. Hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Our Voices Today on WOVU 95.9 FM. This is Burton Bell Carr Community Radio streaming live from WOVU.org and the WOVU mobile app please check out wovu on instagram uh our good friend blue janita blue is doing some good work i saw on there on the wovu instagram first of all i just want to warn y'all i during the break on the during the first break i'm gonna get the correct instagram address for this particular station because i think there's three of them out there but you know you're at the right one when you see our flagship colors like the purple the black and the blue and the white like outlining the posts i know that for sure because uh miss janita blue is doing some great work a shout out to her and shout out to all of you uh for tuning in to wovu this is the our voices today program i am your host tc lewis i hope that everyone is feeling good and feeling well i hope that you are that you had a chance to drink some fresh clean water this morning yesterday i actually did do the warm lemon water in the morning and uh i mean i was refreshed and then i followed it up with uh, some lemon ice water because it's just there's nothing like just a crisp bite is it a bite if you're drinking well but anyway just that feeling of fresh uh cold water first thing in the morning you could be a little parched you know when you wake up especially if you sleep with your mouth open as i think i do uh, as my child tells me I have a snoring thing going on. I don't like that. So, uh, but all that takes is really, uh, you know, moving your body around, breathing a little bit more, opening up the orifices and, uh, and also, you know, I don't know, relieving stress or something. How do you get rid of snoring? Anybody tell me, send a text to the WOVU talk back line, 216-200-7848, 216-200-7848. Shout out to Joyce in Shaker heights for uh giving us a wonderful uh shout out on the wovu talkback line uh we've been hearing her uh throughout the broadcasting schedule recently joyce and shaker heights thank you so much for tuning in i also have one uh that we're gonna hear from uh, uh, lady red coming up uh very shortly <laughs> this week uh so remember the wovu talkback line 216-200 seven eight four eight two one six two zero zero seven eight four eight uh you can send a text message you can leave a voicemail uh tell us whatever you want and we just might put it on the air it's got to be appropriate though you know tell us how you're feeling about anything uh tell me your favorite places to eat in cleveland particularly black owned places but any place um there's a a brown owned place that i visited today half moon bakery they also they provided the food for um the uh what is it josh you don't know um (laughs) the uh participatory budgeting event that was a couple months ago i think it was in october um they provided the food and it was like open face empanadas and uh rice um and some various sauces and it was super good and i got a today i just happened to be in the area they were open i'm like bet they didn't they weren't doing the empanadas it's breakfast time but i got a chorizo wrap with no cheese and i'm telling you it was the bomb like you never will want to go to mcdonald's ever again in your life uh so um yeah half moon bakery uh they're on west 25th um check them out they are uh i think they also were involved with jumpstart if i'm not mistaken i could be mistaken 
Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see. So what's in the news? What's in the news? There was a story just, uh, it was, well, I think it was published yesterday on CNN. Uh, the headline, Biden still plans to restart federal student loan payments in February of 2022. So apparently, y'all remember when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were running for president and vice president. One of their things, one of their their items on their agenda, right, was to cancel student loans. That's why a bunch of young people voted for them. But contrary to that, uh, he's going to make us keep paying on those student loans, restart uh, the payments. He's not going to cancel them. Uh, despite the upcoming or, or, or you know, despite the spike in the covid (laughs) the the winter covid uh, cases going up and things possibly being shut down some of the cleveland metropolitan school district schools are closed well they closed earlier i mean they're closed now for the winter break right but they closed a couple days earlier some of them a few uh because so many students and staff were out due to covid19 important to get those vaccinations y'all or just stay home stay out the way uh you don't want to get the COVID but Joe Biden is making everybody pay their student loans again starting in February uh White House press secretary secretary excuse me Jen Psaki says we're still assessing the impact of the Omicron variant but a smooth transition back into repayment is a high priority for the administration well here to talk about how student loans and the law intersect here with us today is attorney josh rovinger from the legal aid society of cleveland here with us for another enlightening segment of life and the law conversations about your rights shout out to aaron horan over at legal aid society what a gem and a jewel uh josh welcome to the program welcome to wovu thanks it's a pleasure to be here yeah and welcome to this crazy uh issue of student loans now you are part of the economic justice group uh at with legal aid society of cleveland uh tell us what that means what's economic justice sure so we do uh kind of we kind of have kind of two buckets of work we have uh, a consumer focused uh, set of cases so unlawful debt collection student loan related work uh, Mm -hmm. utilities related issues uh, foreclosures things like that Um, and then we have a a work related uh, set of cases so unemployment cases um, wage theft so if you haven't been paid you know Mm -hmm. overtime you were owed or even all of the wages that you were owed Mm -hmm. um, it's the type of work our unit handles okay that's interesting unlawful debt collection student loans unemployment wage theft what's uh, what what what's unlawful debt collection that's interesting and how do we know that that's happening to us sure so there's a few different statutes or laws that kind of govern how a debt collector can contact you how frequently they can contact you and what manner they can contact you Um, so that's kind of one set of issues that can you know implicate um, your right to, to fight back against the debt. And then often people don't actually owe the debt that a collector is saying that they owe and, mm. and have a, they have a number of rights um, to respond when a debt collector tries to, to sue okay. them or collect on them. That is, that's, that's a good, we have to have you back to talk <laughs> specifically about that and perhaps maybe uh, have some uh, credit repair people join us because they deal with that all the time. But anyway, we're going to uh, jump into our topic of student loans and the law because you have rights regarding uh, your student loans and uh, Josh Rovinger is here to uh, break it all down for us but first one more question about you Josh how long have you been with legal aid and uh, why did you become an attorney sure so I've only been with legal aid almost about for about six months okay um, newbie a newbie at breaking you aid. in on the radio uh, but a, an old an old lawyer at this point <laughs> yeah okay um, <laughs> And so what did, why did I become a lawyer? I think for me, um, the biggest, so before I went to law school uh-huh. and then in law school, 
Um, a lot of my focus was on remedying systemic imbalances okay. um, in a variety of different ways, but I think that's it's, particu- it's particularly pronounced in the legal aid space. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went to law school essentially to, to learn how to fight back against those injustices. Uh-huh. All right. Was there a particular injustice that uh, spurred your interest in that area? Um, I think, you know, gr- so growing up, I was coming out of the closet at the same time that the gay marriage fights were taking place in like the 2004, 2005 era Mm -hmm. and feeling helpless in that environment. Okay. And I think brought it to a a personal level that that prompted me to. But but that's what often it is, you know, uh, having to, being touched by an issue uh, personally um, uh, impacts you to respond personally to, you know, put your efforts out there i don't know why my words are losing me but um but yeah thank you for um sharing that so josh rovinger is here um an attorney in the economic justice group with the legal aid society of cleveland we're going to take a break and when we come back uh we will dive deep into uh student loans and the law we'll talk a little bit more about um the end of the COVID-19 grace period for student loans uh, and what some things that you can do, you know, if you go into default, what can you, what are your options and other very pertinent information. If you are struggling with a legal issue that impacts any of your basic needs, uh, including student loans, because Josh is here to help you, uh, but uh, such as housing, safety, or finances, you can always visit Legal Aid's website at www.lasclev.org, lasclev.org to apply for help. You can also call their intake line at 216-687-1900, 216-687-1900. We'll be right back with more of Life and the Law Student Loans. If you have any questions, call us live during the break. 216-271-0959 216-271-0959 a lot of phone numbers you will always need to have a pen and paper when you're listening to our voices today on wovu 95.9 fm we will be right back Why listen to WOVU? I'll tell you why. We got everything you need for your audio pleasure right here. Starting off with our voices today with T.C. Lewis, having important conversations that affect our community. What else? Up next, we got Church with Jay the Gospel Kid, playing those sanctified songs to save your soul. What else? We got DJ Black Unicorn for your drive time, and she has conversations about what's going on in the culture right now. What else? We got DJ Chris Styles playing all Cleveland music every day. Oh yeah, I'm on there too. And a plethora of other shows. We got sports, we got music, we've got inspiration, we've got everything you need for your audio pleasure right here in one spot. So tune in to WOVU 95.9 FM. Burton Bell Car Community Radio. Since 1997, St. Luke's Foundation has awarded millions of dollars each year to positive, impactful organizations that serve you and your community. And now it's time to put the money where your mouth is. So we're introducing Lift Every Voice, a platform created to hear directly from you. We want to know what's important to you and what's important for your community so St. Luke's Foundation can put all these millions in all the right places. And sharing your voice is easy easy to do. Go to lev216.org and sign up for the Lift Every Voice email and text updates. It's completely anonymous and totally free. And your voice will impact where, why, and how St. Luke's Foundation spreads that monetary love. Head over to lev216.org and sign up now to help lift every voice in our community. This message is brought to you by St. Luke's Foundation and W. OVU 95.9 FM, Our Voices United, a Burton Bell Car community radio station. 
Yo, 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 this alien I play from Cleveland, Ohio. Happy holidays, happy day off, or happy grind time, whatever one you choose. Take care of the flam, enjoy. It's time to make the short story. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Our Voices Today on WOVU 95.9 FM, another riveting edition of Life and the Law, conversations about your rights with our friends. A new friend from the Legal Aid Society of Cleveland, attorney Josh Rovinger, is here with us live in the building. He is a part of the Economic Justice Group with Legal Aid, and we are talking about student loans uh people are gonna have to start paying their student loans back again this coming february 2022 so josh is here to help us get ready but first josh let's uh talk about you know the um i guess it was a moratorium right on student loan payments due to the covid 19 uh pandemic when did that go into effect yeah so that started i think either march or april of 2020 first by congressional action um, and then the prior president and President Br- President Biden mm-hmm. um, extended it a few times. Yeah. Um, the last extension he indicated was the the final one, and it seems like he's mm-hmm. sticking to that now. Yeah, unfortunately, what like we said, or, or like I mentioned before the break, uh, and like you mentioned to me, with the cases, the COVID nineteen cases going up, possible shutdowns looming, um, which means people are still going to be uh looking for money trying to generate income and maybe all that may be uh canceled or put to a halt once again but these payments student loan payments are are coming due what is that do you know the average amount of a student loan payment for a person um i don't don't know the exact amount per month i know so the average debt load yeah. ranges between like twenty seven thousand and thirty five thousand. Okay. Um, black borrowers, on average, have about thirty five thousand dollars in debt, and the average white borrower has about twenty seven thousand dollars in debt. Um, I think you know. I think we'll get into this, mm-hmm. but the student loan space is kind of emblematic of larger racial systemic problems in our society yeah for and, sure and that is just kind of one example right there yeah uh, and i mean we could get into it now because this is like a, the juicy a juicy thing um you you said to me that reducing uh student loan debt by fifty thousand dollars for black borrowers um would essentially wipe out their debt like you said the average black borrower is at thirty-five thousand dollars uh in borrowed funds but also would change reduce the racial wealth gap from 10 to 1 to 3 to 1. that is ridiculously amazing it's the the advocates in this space who are pushing for loan cancellation have done really significant research on this Mm -hmm. and it is staggering that uh they've found that if you cancel fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt for every household it would single-handedly reduce the racial wealth gap from 10 to 1 to 3 to 1. yes and uh what would that could you give us uh, like a a, an explanation or something that's more relatable to where we can grasp like the the difference in that so i think i mean i think advocates in that space would say that it would you know change people's day-to-day lives like yeah. as, as it is right now both the prospect of student loan debt and then having student loan debt impacts everyday decisions that mm-hmm. people make so when someone's in school it impacts how many classes they're taking at a certain time and where they're living and what school they're going to um, and then when they have the student loan debt there's a lot of a lot of evidence suggesting that uh, people delay getting married delay having kids uh, delay buying be, being having the ability to buy a house uh, being able to save for retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I think when we talk about student loans, it really does intersect with every aspect of, of people's lives. Um, wow. And I, I think, you know, when we talk about who holds student loan debt, I, I do think it's important to center the conversation on the fact that it's 
borrowers of color who um, are disproportionately holding uh, the most debt. Right. Um, and um, because of um, kind of structural, the structural uh, preclusion of developing intergenerational wealth, black mm-hmm. borrowers are on, on average are also a- unable to pay back their debt in the same way that white borrowers are. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think I think that's always a good level setting for mm-hmm. for who has this debt. Yeah. Wow. 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 So, um, man, in getting ready to um, uh, tackle this uh, these student loan payments once again. Um, Legal Aid has uh, some information that is available on the website, correct? That's right. So a lot of borrowers um, don't know that they have the right to something called an income-driven repayment plan. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's certainly not perfect uh, what, what the Department of Education offers there. Um, but for a lot of borrowers, um, what it'll do is it'll peg your monthly payment amount to your income um, and for some people, that will mean a zero dollar monthly payment. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I was reading this one statistic recently that only about um, forty three percent of borrowers who are on SNAP or SSI um, actually are signed up for an income driven repayment plan, mm. um, and most of those borrowers would be eligible for a zero dollar payment. Right. Um, and so, you know, as we're thinking about going back into repayment, it really is essential for for folks to be thinking about how am I going to make these payments and, and whether an income driven repayment plan is, is right for, for right in your circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, there are other types of uh, payment plans as well, right? So there, so there's four income driven repayment plans and it's really wonky and technical, but depending <laughs> on, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, but the main thing is that they look at your income, how much you're making and determine an appropriate, uh, monthly payment based on uh, what you owe um and so uh, man i let's see let's see um so uh on the legal aid website you can go to lasclev.org slash student loans uh to uh, get that information and figure out where to find it i know there are different um oh this is these are and this information is for federal student loans right What's the difference between a federal loan and a private loan, and how do you know which one you have? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. So, I think a lot of people when they, you know, see their loan, they're getting contacted by their loan servicer. So, Navient, yeah. Great Lakes, uh, Fed Loan Mo- Servicing, Mohila. yeah, Mohila. Um, they're actually just working on behalf. Generally, they're working on behalf of the Department of Education. Um, and so, a federal student loan is one that is either owned by the federal government or guaranteed by the federal government. Okay. Um, most of all, most of the more recent loans are, are all owned by the federal government. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other hand, a private loan is owned by a private lender, and a lot of the rights that you have with respect to federal student loans don't necessarily translate to the private mm-hmm. loan space. Um, it really just depends on on what your contract with the private lender is. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons why I think it's so important for borrowers to be thinking right now about what repayment plan they should be in and applying for the repayment plan is we've seen on, on much more limited scales, we've seen what happens after disaster forbearances And the number of students who become delinquent or default on their loans is staggering. Um, And so, you know, right now you can go and apply for income driven repayment plan immediately and get it set up so that when repayment starts, um, you're um, you have a monthly payment that that is right for your circumstance and that you don't fall into default or delinquency. Yeah. So you said disaster forbearances. What is that? What do you mean? Yeah. So in the face of. like hurricanes, uh, the mm-hmm. federal government in limited geographic areas will put okay. a pause on student loan payments. Gotcha. Um, and then, not surprisingly, when they restart, folks mm-hmm. may, you know, we all have a billion things going on in our lives mm-hmm. and so may not realize that it's restarting and then fall behind. And then once you fall behind, yeah. it's very, very difficult yeah, to catch Especially up. if you're recovering from a disaster, you may not be checking all of your mail, opening all the envelopes, or looking closely at your emails, yeah. Uh, it's just so crazy. And then, so what happens? So we all, I can imagine um, with a uh, private loan, private student loan, if you don't pay, it's going to affect 
your credit you know they could take you to court probably what happens when you don't pay a federal student loan yeah so if you don't if you go into default which is which means that you haven't paid on your loan for 270 days Mm -hmm. um, it'll it'll affect your credit score Um, the federal government also has really staggering and extreme powers um, to collect that money without going to court um, okay. So they can garnish your wages. Okay. They can offset your tax return. They can offset, including your EITC. You can. Uh. They can offset your social security benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. then, if you're in default, you're also ineligible to take out additional federal student loans while you're in default. So you know, this is um, interesting because there's so many consequences, right? Or you know, we take out student loans in order to further our education, to get a leg up in life in uh, this United States of America. Um, Higher education costs are exorbitant, astronomical. Uh, So we take out these loans, which are equally exorbitant and astronomical. And and we need to take out more than the actual tuition because we have to pay for books and housing and transportation and food, or we have to work three, four, seven, 10 jobs. Um, And, um, you know, all in an effort to live, you know, a happy, fulfilling, you know, a solid life, right? But, and then we get out of college. We have this degree. We may or may not find a position that will enable us to sustain our livelihood and pay back this flipping loan that we took out from the federal government. Seem, you know, the federal government, you think it's gonna, they're here to help, right? We're here to help. We're average Americans. The reason why we need to take out loans to pay for education is because we come from backgrounds where we cannot afford to pay it out of pocket fully on our own. So to saddle, you know, to to um, put another burden on top of the average American, like we're not talking about, you know, a trust fund kid, you know, we're not talking about like the the, the son or the daughter or the president of Microsoft or whoever, the people who we know can take care of it, can handle it. These They can send their kids wherever they want. We're talking about average American parents. You know, the average income is what, uh, f- t- between twenty five and $45,000 in this country. Um, that's not a lot to be able to send your uh, children to college. So you take out the student loans and again, in an attempt to get a leg up and it ends up weighing you down it pushes you farther down into the dirt it makes it harder to build the life that you want um i don't know i guess i was on my soapbox for a second but it just doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense and then with all these consequences that come with not being able to pay them back when often it's not your fault that you can't pay it back yeah i think i think it's a moral dilemma I think advocates of uh, wide scale cancellation would point to kind of the the promise of the American dream. You go to college, you get a good job, um, and you know then you're able to pay back on these student loans. And I think for for a lot of people, um, that's just not the reality of of the system that we've created. Um, I'd also I'd add on top of that that. You know, for a lot of borrowers who go to college, um, they don't finish their degree, and so they're settled with this debt and don't that have too. a degree to show for it. I think it's like 40% of student mm-hmm. loan borrowers don't finish their four years. And then, you know, th- that's you're in that situation if you, you know, went to a school that taught you something and you have a degree that, that does land you a job. Um, but there's also, you know, the realm of predatory schools yeah. where – you go to school, you don't learn anything. They've lied to you about, you know, th- their job placement or mm. um, employment prospects. Um, and, you know, I- I've had clients who take their school name off their resume because it's more of a hindrance mm. than, than it helps. And so you imagine people in, th- in that situation yeah. where they're also saddled with this stuff. Yeah. Wow. Same in same situation. Look, uh, looking for uh, looking for that promise to be fulfilled of. Uh, learning a skill or getting a type of education and often you'll see those commercials and now all over social media um, uh, you know uh, just six or eight months or a year and we guaranteed job placement and you come out on the other end and like you you mentioned um, you have nothing to show for it and it's empty yeah yeah and it's it the the, that tends to be um, 
in the for-profit college sector. Yeah. It, it tends to occur. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of schools in that sector um, prey on, you know, um, veterans, single parents, low-income individuals, homeless individuals, people of color, and then manipulate them, their emotions and their economic state to get them to enroll. Mm -hmm. And you're in a, in a world where because the federal government is lending you money to go to it, it seems like the federal government is giving its stamp of approval mm -hmm. on the education you're about to receive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do think that that's kind of one area where um, legal aid and just finding a lawyer can be helpful, though, mm -hmm. um, because in addition to um, you know, just, just general claims individuals might have under the law. And there are some administrative pathways to getting um, certain loans discharged from the federal government wow. if you've been defrauded, for example. Okay. How would you go? Is there, I know you can't give, is there a typical situation? Probably not, but the, the best that you can give um, where a, a person has gone to one of these for profit schools and feels like they've been gypped or jilted. And uh, uh, and uh, what is, what's the steps or to remedy that? Yeah, so it's so so far the federal government has only so so, so the process is called borrower defense to repayment. Mm -hmm. um, so far, the federal government has only discharged debts um, through this process um, for a number of schools. So um, a few owned by Corinthian colleges, um, okay. which no longer exists. Um, and like ITT Tech is another example. Yep, I remember that. Um, so, so there are different ways to go about applying. Because um, I'm, I'm pausing a little bit because the the, reg <laughs> the rules governing all of this are constantly changing and are about to change are likely about to change again. Okay. Um, but essentially, what you would do is there's an application that you can fill out detailing the experience that you've had, uh, attaching any evidence that you have and then submitting that to the federal government okay. uh, yeah. or to the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, where there have been discharges thus far, um, it's been in instances where there are, you know, court findings against a school uh, for, for wrongdoing or um, where like a state attorney general uh, files an application on behalf of a, a group of borrowers, okay. uh, which is kind of another mechanism where this relief can be granted. Yeah. Wow. Interesting, interesting stuff. So if you li listen, there is a recourse out there. If you feel like you have been uh, taken, uh, I'm trying to think of those uh, interesting phrases, but if you feel like you have been defrauded by an institution, uh, you can, there is some help that you can possibly get uh, contact Legal Aid Society to get more information on that. A wonderful attorney like our friend Josh here uh, will probably be able to uh, assist you in breaking down whatever uh, help that they can give. And if you have any other legal issue that impacts your basic needs, perhaps housing, safety, or finances, please pick up the phone now and call Legal Aid, especially if you are facing eviction. You need to just drop whatever you're doing. Keep the radio on, but drop what you're doing and pick up your phone and dial 211 and they will connect you. Tell them you want to uh, you want to get in touch with Legal Aid for the Right to Counsel program uh, that is still in effect. Uh, legal help for evictions for residents of Cleveland, um, especially if you have uh, children in your household, one child or more, uh, call 211 or you can call 216 six eight seven one nine zero zero two one six six eight seven one nine zero zero is the intake line if you speak spanish habla espanol call two one six five eight six three one nine zero five eight six three one nine zero so we're going to take a break if you have any questions about student loans we've been learning some really interesting stuff thank you so much josh uh for joining us today uh on our voices today another edition of life and the law conversations about your rights around student loans send a text to the talkback line 216-200-7848 216-200-7848 we'll be right back with more on our voices today on wovu 95.9 fm This is Commissioner Nicole Carlton of the City of Cleveland's Division of EMS. 
We are currently accepting applications for paramedics. We offer career advancement, a competitive salary, great benefits, and job security. Call 216-623-5233 to speak with our recruitment team now or go to www.governmentjobs.com forward slash careers forward slash Cleveland. Apply today and begin your pathway to a great medical career. The greatest privilege is the opportunity to serve others and we want you to join our team. This message is brought to you by the City of Cleveland Division of EMS and WOVU 95.9 FM, Burton Bell Car Community Radio. The United States could soon have a pill to treat COVID-19. The pharmaceutical company Merrick has requested approval from the Food and Drug Administration to begin distributing a COVID-19 pill. This comes after Merrick and Ridgeback recently conducted a study with the oral antiviral Molnupiravir. It showed the risk of hospitalization and death cut by half in a trial involving patients with mild to moderate COVID-19. While this is big news, the pill will not come cheap here. It could cost up to $700 in the United States, but as low as $20 in other countries. Some may even distribute the pill for free. It's worth investigating alternatives to vaccinations, as well as discussing their pros and cons, which includes costs. Learn more about the COVID-19 pill at the Long Haul Kickoff event on Saturday, November 27th. This is WOVU 95.9 FM, our voices united, a Burton Bell Car community radio station. First and foremost, I want you to know that I need you to live. Um, you were created for a purpose, you were created for destiny, and no matter what you're going through, the pain that we are experiencing in our lives all adds up to our God-given purpose. I am telling you that I want to see you live because your story will inspire me. This message of hope is from the Alcohol, Drug, Addiction, and Mental Health Services Board of Cuyahoga County, the Suicide Prevention Coalition, and WOVU 95.9 FM. Our voices united, a Burton Bell Car Community Radio Station. It's time to make the short story Welcome back. You are tuned in to Our Voices Today on WOVU 95.9 FM, Burton Bell Car Community Radio. I'm T.C. Lewis. Attorney Josh Rovinger is here with us uh, for another edition of Life in the Law, conversations about your rights, about student loans uh, from the Legal Aid Society of Cleveland. Josh is a part of the Economic Justice Group, which handles uh, such things as student loans, uh, other unlawful debt collections, unemployment ca- issues, and wage theft, and probably some other more intricate things. But uh, we're talking about student loans um, today, and I uh, want to make sure that people, you know, know that uh, for one, you can get help, legal help with student loans. We talked about, you know, if you feel like you've gotten caught up with a for-profit. Um, college or institution um, and you want would like to get some justice you can call legal aid can help help you for that or there are legal remedies for that um, what if you default on a loan like is there any um, hmm, I don't know like is there when you default on a loan what can happen to you legally other than the garnishment of wages and like trying to get the money back but is there any like s- s- criminal penalty or is it just like civil so i don't think there's any i don't i don't want to not that i'm aware of Mm -hmm. um i think the biggest risk is that um they will just you know involuntarily take your money (laughs) (laughs) yeah okay um and what other situations should you get a lawyer to help with student loans yeah so I, i think there are a number of instances where a lawyer can be helpful um so if you attended a school and it closed while you were attending, um, you have mm. you likely have a right to something called a closed school discharge. Okay. Um, and so a lawyer can help you with that. Um, if, you're, um, if you have a mental or physical disability that prevents mm. you from working or going to school, um, there is a, you know, an avenue for um, relief there. 
um, if you were the victim, if you didn't actually sign for your student loans, like you were the victim of identity theft, right. um, there's also an administrative route um, where a lawyer could help you apply for, um, it's called a false certification discharge. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, th- I think those are the, the main situations where lawyers can be helpful. Interesting. Now there are other, um, uh, well, we talked about uh, forbearance. We talked about, um, what's the other, the, the repayment plans. Um, but there are also, and we were, we're we were looking for President Biden to uh, cancel student loan debt, forgive all those loans. But there are ways that uh, uh, borrowers can have their loan debt canceled um, do through various programs. One of them is which you know, if you go into public service. Yeah, that's right. The public yeah. service loan forgiveness program. Yeah. So what's that? Yeah. So. Um, so this came about, um, I think, in 2007, the idea being that if you give 10 years uh, in public service, so working, generally speaking, for a nonprofit organization, mm-hmm. the federal government would discharge your loans. Um, in practice, the program has been a disaster. Wow. Um, a lo- so the way that the initial rules were set up, um, you had to be in very specific uh repayment plans um, and had to, you know, constantly recertify your employment. And these rules just were not made clear to people. And so a lot of people who would be who were eligible for that discharge um, got denied. Um, Right now, though, so the federal the Department of Education, maybe two months ago, announced that um, for the next year, so until October 2022, um, no matter what repayment plan you were in before, if you have been in public service, you can apply for what they're calling a waiver um, and have all of that time count. Wow. So if you were, yeah, if you if you paid student loans um, over the past decade and you've been in the public sector, um, I, I highly encourage you to go to the Department of Education's website um, and apply for that waiver so you have that, that period, that back period count. Mm-hmm. Um, Looking forward, the Department of Education is currently in the process of rewriting the rules, um, which will hopefully solve some of the problems moving forward as well. Um, so you said if you work if you're working in the public sector, which includes nonprofit organizations and what else? Public school teacher, a public school teacher. So government. Wow. Um, yes. Yeah. So any anything. Government. Um, the the main um, restriction right now um, is just. If you're in, if you have an employer who um, is a for-profit entity, right? Okay, that's awesome. That's good to know. That is good to know. Um, and then uh, let's see, um, what? Um, so let's say I call. Uh, well, what's okay? Sorry, one last question. How can a person get back on track with rehabilitation when they've gone when they have defaulted? What is rehabilitation? Sure. So if, if someone um, goes into default, you know, you're not stuck in default. You have two potential options to, to get out of default and get your loans back into good standing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can only do each of these one time. Um, and so ever, ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> OK, so the first is called rehabilitation. And what that, you apply for this program and what you're essentially doing is making, um, in in a 10 month period, you're gonna make nine reasonable payments on your loans. And that's, and the government will then say, well, you've rehabilitated your loans and so they're now back in good standing. Mm -hmm. Um, What the amount is each month just depends on your individual circumstance and what what you apply for and what the government um, will accept as a reasonable amount. The other option is called um, loan consolidation. And so so just kind of backing up for a second, Mm -hmm. when we have student loans, we tend to think of it as like, I have a student loan. In truth, if you attend school for multiple semesters, you actually have several different student loans. Um, And what consolidation means is you take all of those loans and you're basically creating a new, entirely new loan. Um, so they're combining all of them, and you're now essentially taking out a new loan that just combines everything you had right. before. You know, for the most part, it, there there are some kind of risks to consolidation depending on your individual circumstances. You know, the the 
the government has said, you know, you might lose certain um, remedies that you would have on the underlying loan because it's a new loan in theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for, for most people, that's probably not a that's it, that risk is probably not enough to outweigh the benefit of consolidation and the benefit of getting out of default. Um, yeah. But that is just something to flag, depending on on your unique circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I think I think you know th there are these ways out of default. I think the most important thing right now, though, really is thinking about how to prevent going into default in the yeah. first place. And and for a lot of pe and for most people, it's you know enrolling in an income driven repayment plan, which could potentially be uh, as low as zero dollars a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and uh, and then the other thing before even that is to. How do we pay for school without taking out loans? Yeah. Or do we even need to go to school anymore? I mean, that's a question that a lot of people are uh, wrestling with or, or you know, uh, battling with with their parents <laughs> and their families. Right. Yeah. No, they, and, and I think those are much, much bigger questions that are certainly being, you know, I think for a good a good reason, being pushed to uh, the front of our our public discussion. Mm -hmm. um, there was this really interesting interview with uh, Louis Simster and Tr uh, Dr. Trussie McMillan Cotton um, on the Ezra Klein show recently, um, okay. where, you know, they made the point that, you know, they one of the, that advocates for student loan cancellation aren't just doing it as kind of a, a past looking remedy, although in their view, it certainly is that, mm -hmm. but also in kind of forcing that broader conversation about mm -hmm. how should higher education be funded right. um, and, and what is the value of higher education in today's mm -hmm. world. Yeah, absolutely. And I, when you said that, I was thinking um, when in terms of like uh, the look forward, um, uh, again, going back to the, the mention of the, the racial disparity um, in economics, taking away that $50,000 amount uh, increases the racial equity between blacks and whites in this country. Um, but the the economy, you have people have more money to spend to boost up the economy. They have more, um, uh, you know, energy to put forth towards, you know, creating more businesses. And instead of being worrying about how am I going to make this student loan payment? Like, it's just so weird how everything is just so backwards here. Is this the bizarro world or what? <laughs> in, in many, in more ways than one, I yeah. think we're in the bizarro world. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, one of those things. I don't understand why people, why don't people just think like TC? Um, but I don't know. Yeah, there are, I mean, this. I, I'm I, open to receiving the answer. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What were you going to say, though? Oh, it's, I think, you know, I, th I think there's something, or a advocates for debt cancellation, I think would agree with that sentiment that, you know, you look at statistics on repayment of student loans, and the most staggering statistic, I keep using that word, staggering, because there's a lot that's staggering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the most <laughs> astonishing student, this most astonishing statistic I've seen on repayment, and I think this speaks to where we are right now as a society, um, is that. 20 years after taking out a loan, an average white borrower will have repaid 95% of that loan. Mm. The average black borrower will still owe 95% mm. of the debt. I think that speaks to problems of compounding interest, of intergenerational wealth. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I think, I think when, when, we're t when we're having a conversation about student loans and, and what the remedy is and what the impacts would be, you know, I think focusing in on you know, data like that that we know mm -hmm. and kind of facts like that that we know is just so critical. Yeah, yeah. And and it's right there. It's not like it's hidden. It's published. It's publicized. No. We're talking about it on the radio. So why isn't this being implemented or integrated into public policy? There, there's also, there is some research as well on the broader economic effects of um, broad scale cancellation. I think I've seen it. I've seen research going both ways. Some suggesting that it wouldn't have too much of an effect, and then some suggesting that it would have a very substantial mon and mm -hmm. monumental effect on the economy. Yeah, yeah. Usually, the people um, who are experiencing whatever is being researched can tell you the truth on how what different solutions will uh, how they will impact them. And usually, what the people say is the opposite of what the I don't know. 
the people at in the uh, uh, sitting around the glass tables and what the whatever what now josh thank you uh for uh, uh joining us today on the program uh life and the law conversations about your rights about student loans are you a student loan borrower uh do you think you well we should always have um some sort of uh legal professional at hand at a moment's notice uh but that's what legal aid is there for us for especially those of us who can't afford to keep an attorney on retainer you know what i'm saying um at least for civil things a legal aid society can help you uh especially when it comes to your basic needs uh and uh other things like employment unemployment domestic safety which is a basic need um and along with food housing utility utilities education all of these wonderful things legal aid is there for you call 216-687-1900 216-687-1900 let's take a break and in a minute we'll just get some final thoughts from our friend josh attorney josh rovinger uh, a part of the economic justice group at legal aid society of cleveland we'll be right back you still have a chance to get in any questions uh call us live 216-271-0959 and uh, we'll be right back to close up the show WOVU 95.9, Our Voices United, wish you and yours happy holidays. May this season be a blessing and constant reassurance that everything will be okay for you and your family. This is Community Radio at its best. WOVU 95.9 FM, a Burton Bell Car Community Radio Station. Wow, I wish there was a way I could listen to WOVU when I wasn't in the city. But there is. Really? Yes. You can go to WOVU.org. Go to our webpage. It's got everything on all the shows. Eric Nolan is in the building. This is Rachel Hill, the host of Her in the Huddle. This is Delvis Valentine. I'm listening. Yo, what it do with your girl DJ Coco Z? Hey, I am Talitha Kube from Let's Talk About It. Hi, this is DJ Black Unicorn. WOVU.org. Tap that app. Listen live. This is WOVU 95.9 FM, Burton Bell Car Community Radio. All right, we are back, uh, rounding out the last couple minutes of our voices today. Josh Rovinger has been kindly uh, here with us, uh, live on the air, talk, giving us the uh, breakdown around student loans the uh repayments will begin february 2022 according to our dear president joseph r Biden, robinette what a name uh <laughs> you're laughing over there um but yes we're gonna have to start paying back our student loans y'all so uh, josh and i and legal aid and our friend Aaron over there. Hey, Aaron, um, want you to make sure, want to make sure that you are on top of all of the upcoming changes, getting readjusted. If you need some help, uh, call Legal Aid. They'll help you navigate um, through the murky waters of student loan repayment. Um, and if you're in danger of default, they have some advice for you. Um, call 216 6 8719002166871900 also go to the website they have a whole guide on there for you lasclev.org lasclev.org/studentloans and the National Consumer Law Center website also has information uh, for you but you know maybe you're you know maybe you just want to talk to somebody call legal aid 687-1900 a lot of people don't like websites you know um but uh josh uh yes so we want to make sure people are aware and alert and are paying attention um because you said uh just a moment ago there's changes lots of changes in this area as as we get closer to february yeah so you know i think it's important to keep in mind 
the the government has never moved 45 million borrowers into repayment at a single time before. Um, and it's doing so at the same time that um, it's also moving certain borrowers from some loan servicers to other loan servicers. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, in a di- my, my two biggest pieces of advice would be, you know, uh, income driven repayment plan, like figure out now, you know, what you're going to be doing in February. And then also just paying it, you know, as, as often as you can, you know, look at what's happening in your account. Make sure if you apply for income driven repayment, it's being processed because, you know, this is this is a unique, yeah. uh, unprecedented situation. And so there's going to be hiccups yeah. for sure. For sure. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, what are you doing for the holidays? We're just taking it easy, <laughs> catching up on sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Catching up on sleep. Sounds good. Sounds You need sleep to think good thoughts, to send those good vibes out into the world. Thank you, uh, Josh Rovinger, again, uh, attorney with the Legal Aid Society of Cleveland, a newbie, just six months into the job, and already Aaron has thrown him to the wolves of radio, but we are uh, very nice wolves over here at WOVU. We are fierce, but we are kind. Thank you so much, Josh, and thank you to our listeners uh, for tuning in. If at any moment you have a question that you didn't think of or, you know, maybe you, you, too late to call in, uh, leave a text on the talk back line, 216-200-7848. You can send me an email to ovt at wovu.org. Um, or you can call Legal Aid uh, if you have a question directly for them. They are at 216 216- Six eight seven one nine zero zero two eight six six eight seven one nine zero zero, and not only about student loans. Remember about anything in life. You know they'll talk to you. They may not have all the answers, but if it's legal and it's civil, then they can point you in the right direction. Uh, housing, safety, finances, domestic violence, education, all those things. Uh, what? Uh, medical stuff too right so we have a yeah medical legal partnership yeah. and medical debt that's right yeah okay you know even look listen even if we didn't say something and you need help with it legally and it's civil it's not criminal call them up 216-687-1900 keep your dialogue to wovu 95.9 fm uh we love you have a great day cleveland Stand up, my people. We here at WOVU 95.9, our voices united, are about to bring to you a crystal clear sound on our terrestrial frequency. Matter of fact, you're going to have to turn your volume down. 100% stereo, bass knocking in your speakers, rocking music all day long with the WOVU website and the app. The upgrade is going to 192,000 bits. Baby, explain to me again how clear that is. It's like going from HD to 4K. I wonder. It's going to be clearer than your mama calling your name when the street lights come on. Ooh. Oh, I think I like the sound of that. Tune in. Check us out. We got some new sounds coming your way with the same great content we've been having. That good Cleveland music, that good inspiration, that good informative community information that we have for everybody out there. So check us out with the new sounds. WOVU 95.9 FM BBC Community Radio.